Number 63, determine the formal charge of each element in the following. And then we have A through E. Okay, so we did a very similar problem like this in number 62. So if you want a more in-depth version of this, go back to that one. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion. So there's two things that you need to know in order to determine the formal charge. The first is how to draw a perfect Lewis structure. So if you guys are not strong in your Lewis structures, you can go back to questions 40, I think it starts in this chapter, and we do a lot of Lewis structures just perfecting how to draw them. So that's the first thing. You got to learn how to draw the Lewis structure. And then from there, you can um, basically do the formal charge formula. Now, they give you a formal charge formula in the textbook. However, I think that's a little bit confusing. So I like to make my own, which is this right here. So I provided it for you guys. All right. So we just have to kind of memorize this formula and just apply it when we draw our Lewis structures. And that's it. Now, just know that why do we have to do these formal charges? Why do we have to know these formal charges? Well, this will tell you if a element or a molecule as a whole is stable. So it just shows stability of a compound. That's all that these charges are telling you. The less charges, the better. So in the last example, I think all of them were zero, which means that all of those um, compounds were super stable. No elements had a charge on them. They were all nice and happy. These, it looks like, were going to have charges. So these are going to be less stable than the other ones. So let's see how it's done. So for A, you can pause the video and try to make your own Lewis structure and see if it matches with mine. I'm going to assume that you guys know how to draw your Lewis structures because we're past that stage in the textbook. So for A, you should have an oxygen in the middle surrounded by three hydrogens and one lone pair on the oxygen. And since there is a charge here, you have to just say it. So I have to bracket and put a plus at the top. So that would be the correct Lewis structure. Now let's run through the formal charge. Now it's the formal charge formula for an atom. So you have to do it for every atom. And in this case, they want you to do it for each atom or each element. So we have to do it for the three hydrogens and the one oxygen. However, if you can see that there are atoms or elements that are exactly the same, you could only do the formal charge for one of them and then just distribute that number to the other ones. So for example, these three hydrogens look all the same, right? They have no lone electrons and they're all attached by a single bond to the oxygen. So if I know the formal charge for one of them, I'll know the formal charge for all of them. So let's get started. I'm going to say, let's find the formal charge for the oxygen, and then we will find the formal charge for the hydrogen. So the formal charge formula is valence electrons, which is what it is on the periodic table, minus the number of bonds that that atom has, minus the number of quote unquote dots, which are lone electrons. So for oxygen, what is the valence electrons that oxygen has? Well, oxygen's over here, it has six valence electrons. So that's the first number, six. Minus, because that's in the formula, they're both minuses, so you're always going to be subtracting. Number of bonds. Well, in oxygen's case, oxygen has, which is over here, oxygen has one, two, three bonds attached to it. So it would be minus three. Minus... How many dots does oxygen have? Well, oxygen has two dots, right? They're up here. One, two. So this would be six minus three minus two, which is, if I just do that, six minus three minus two is a plus one. Now, with formal charges, you can say one, but usually you put the positive there, really signifying that it is a positive charge. So this oxygen will have a formal charge of a plus one which means that it's not as stable as it would want to be. It would want to be a zero charge, but it's more positive. Okay, let's do the uh, formal charge for hydrogen. Hydrogen valence electrons is over here. It has one valence electron. So I'll say one minus, I'll do the hydrogen at the bottom. How many bonds do you see? Well, this hydrogen only has the one bond. You can't say three because 
those bonds are not attached to the hydrogen that you're talking about. So it would be 1 minus 1 minus, how many dots do you see around this hydrogen? None, right? There's no dots here. So 1 minus 1 minus 0, which is 0. And the other hydrogens are exactly the same. So each formal charge for the hydrogens would be 0. Formal charge for hydrogen is 0. Formal charge for hydrogen is 0. The oxygen is the only one that has the plus 1 charge. Now, here is where you can check yourself. The sum, addition, of all the formal charges should always equal the charge in the upper right-hand corner, if there is. So remember that there was three hydrogens. So if I just times by three by zero, it's still going to be zero. And plus one from the oxygen plus a zero gives me an overall um, plus one charge. And that's what the charge was in the beginning. It was H3O plus. So that makes sense. It checks out. So there you go. That's the answer for A. The oxygen has the plus one charge. The hydrogens have zero. B. SO4, two minus. So I see that we have a negative two charge, which means that some elements are going to have a charge. We just got to figure out which ones it has. So pause the video if you want to try to write your Lewis structure by yourself. But it should come out to be sulfur with a double bonded O, a double bonded O, and then a single bond and a single bond. Now, there's another variation to this formula, which has no double bonds. It would be all single bonds. That's fine as well. Either one is acceptable. So it should come out to something like this. And just know that sulfur can have the expanded octet because it's below the second period, right? This has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons. So the sulfur is good here because it's below the second period. You can have more than 8 electrons if you are in the center. So it looks like I have two different types of oxygens in this drawing, right? I have a oxygen that has the double bond, and I have two of those, right? One on the top, one on the bottom. And then I have... Two oxygens, I'll put it in a different color so that you guys can see. I have two oxygens with the single bonds. So I have to technically do the formal charge for both of these. One with the double bond and one with the single bond because they're not exactly the same. And then you have to take the sulfur. So first off, since it has a charge, I have to bracket and put that charge in the upper right-hand corner. And now I'm going to say formal charge for sulfur formal charge for oxygen, I'll put a double bond, and then we'll say formal charge for oxygen, the ones that have the single bond. All right, so let's start. For sulfur, valence electrons on the periodic table, sulfur's over here, it has six. So six minus, how many bonds do you see that sulfur has? Well, now there's one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. You count the double bond twice. You count just as many lines that you see, technically. So when you say number of bonds, you could just say how many lines. It means exactly the same thing. So this would be minus six minus. Does this sulfur have any lone electrons? No, I don't see any dots around sulfur. So minus zero. And then that would be equal to zero. So that sulfur is stable. Now let's check for the oxygen that has the double bond. I'll do the one up top here. Oxygen has a valence of six electrons, so you'll start with six minus how many lines or how many bonds. This sulfur, oh sorry, this oxygen has two lines, two bonds, one, two. So it would be minus two minus how many dots? One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, so minus four. 6 minus 2 minus 4 is 0. And this formal charge for this oxygen is 0. And the one on the bottom, because they're exactly the same. But not the ones on the side, because they are different. That's why we have to do them right now. But still, oxygen has a valence of 6 minus, let's take this oxygen. How many bonds or how many lines is attached to this oxygen? Only 1. So minus 1 minus how many dots do you see? One, two, three, four, 
five, six, so minus six. And this would be a minus one. So there's where your negatives come from. So this formal charge of this oxygen would be negative one. And since the one on the left is exactly the same, this formal charge would also be a negative one. And if we sum them up, the sum of the charges should equal the overall charge, which is a negative two. So there was two of these and two of these. So zero times two is zero. Zero times a negative one is a negative one. And this was just zero. So if I add these up, oops, sorry. Two times a negative one is a negative two. And if you add zero plus zero plus negative two, you get a negative two charge. And there you go. It equals to the charge in the upper right hand corner. So you know that you got it right and B is done. Now let me erase. So if you need to copy it down, you could just pause the video, but I'm gonna get ready for the next one. Let me just try to get rid of some of this and then we will clean it up. Okay, so the next one it looks like is NH3. So you can pause to see if you can draw the Lewis structure and just see if it matches mine. CNH3 would be a nitrogen bound to three hydrogens with one lone pair or two lone electrons. So in this case, all the hydrogens are exactly the same. So I only have to take one and I'll take the formal charge of the nitrogen. So here I'll say formal charge of N and then formal charge of H. So for nitrogen, the valence electrons on the periodic table Nitrogens has five valence electrons, so you start off with five minus how many bonds does this nitrogen have? One, two, three attached to it. So five minus three minus how many lone electrons or dots? One, two. So minus two. Five minus three minus two is zero, neutral. Now let's take the hydrogens. You only have to take one because then you'll know the formal charge for the other ones. Hydrogens, valence electrons is one. So one minus, how many bonds does this hydrogen have? It only has one. So that's one minus one minus, no dots on this. So zero, formal charge is zero, which means that the formal charge for all of these would be zero, right? Formal charge. And since everything is zero, that's why there's no charge in the upper right-hand corner. So C is done. This one was easy. Moving on to D, O2, so peroxide, two minus. The Lewis structure would be two oxygens bound singly with six dots. And since it has a charge, you have to bracket it and put the charge in the upper right-hand corner. And that means that probably one or both of them will have a charge because it has to match this charge total. And if you notice, this oxygen, which has three lone pairs and one bond, is the same as this oxygen, which has three lone pairs and one bond. So in this case, you only have to do it for one of them and then just say that the other one is the same exact charge. So let's see, formal charge of oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So six minus, this oxygen only has one bond, so minus one, and then minus how many lone dots or lone electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six. So minus six, and this would be a negative one. So if this formal charge of this oxygen is negative one, that means that this formal charge would be a negative one. So there's technically two of the same oxygen, so negative one times two, is negative two, and that's why the overall charge is negative two. And it has a charge, which means that peroxide is relatively unstable. And unstable in chemistry world means that it will react with something, if it can. So the more stable you are, the, the less, the more you're chilling, right? They're like, eh, we're stable, we're, we're chilling. But the unstable compounds are the ones that want to react to try to get to be stable. So I'm just going to erase this, and then we will do the last one, which is E, H2O2. So once again, you can pause, try to see if you can do the Lewis structure, but it would be HOOH, 
two lone pairs here. And there you go. Now we just have to do the um, formal charge formula. But it looks like this oxygen, this oxygen with the two bonds and two lone pairs is the same as this oxygen, which has two bonds and two lone pairs. So there is the same, so I could only do one. And this hydrogen and this hydrogen are exactly the same because they just have the one bond. So that's all good. So let's say formal charge of oxygen and then formal charge of hydrogen. Valence electrons for oxygen is six minus, let's just take this oxygen. How many bonds does this oxygen have? One, two. So it'd be six minus two minus how many lone electrons? One, two, three, four, so minus four. So this would be equal to zero. So that means that this formal charge is a zero and this formal charge is a zero. So we are good, right? This formal charge of the oxygen. And now we just have to do formal charge of hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron. So one minus, we'll talk about this hydrogen. How many bonds does this hydrogen have? Well, it only has the one. So one minus one minus, no dots on this, so zero. And that's also zero. So that means that this formal charge would be zero and this formal charge would also be zero and we are good. This whole compound is stable and that's why there is no charge in the upper right hand corner. And we are done with this question. So this one was good because we got to see where the charges come from. They come from the actual atoms inside of the compounds or the molecules that have the charge. So yeah, I mean, just make sure that you know your Lewis structures and memorize the formula, especially if your teacher or professor doesn't provide it for you guys, but you guys are doing great. I'm so proud of you. Or I mean, we're halfway through chapter four. So hopefully you guys are understanding chemistry. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want, you can hit that subscribe button. That would help out the channel a lot. And I Super appreciate it. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.